From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thanks for joining me today. That was the voice of the Rick Altizer Show, Bob Allen. You've heard Bob on this show. You know what? Bob has been on this show as many times as I have because he's introduced me. And so, you know, I'm really excited about my guest today. I say that all the time. But uh, my guest today is somebody that you've already heard today. He is in person with me here, the actual voice of the Rick Altizer Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Bob Allen. Yeah, I got my tuxedo on and everything all dressed up today just for this because it's such an incredible honor. Thanks, all right, Rick. just say hot chicken for me one more time. Hot chicken. <laughs> did I, I already love... say that? Oh, yeah, I did You say did. That. Yeah, You're okay. the home of hot chicken. That was, you know, anyway, in our fun little interview, <laughs> uh, fun uh, intro you did for me. So uh, for those who are familiar with the show, of course, you hear Bob every time the show is on. Bob opens up the show. Thank you, Bob, for doing such a great job of uh, being the voiceover. I, I love do it. a lot for my friends because they're my friends. That's right. That's how I got Bob. He's my buddy. I couldn't afford him any other way. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob, Bob is my friend. We actually did an interview where we talked about his career as a voiceover artist, uh, his, his work with D. James Kennedy. And you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, or anywhere where podcasts are played and search for The Rick Altizer Show. And you can listen to that, that interview, uh, as well as many others. I'm, I'm up to about 150 shows now. Can you believe that? You're a veteran of the radio industry. 150 shows. But Bob uh, has a big history in, in doing Christian radio, is still currently involved in putting radio shows together, doing a lot of the behind the scenes of compiling and making radio shows and editing them and working in his computer in his little... Uh, uh, lair downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> My secret lair beneath a n- nondescript home somewhere. <laughs> yes. He's got this basement, this huge basement. He's over in the corner with his computers, and he's he's got this little sound booth that he has built in there. It's pretty neat. Not little. It's nine by nine. It's pretty big for yeah. a sound booth. It's pretty awesome. You can have an office in there, I guess. You know, yeah, be, you could. You'd, you'd be claustrophobic, but he's got a, you know, he's got a great setup. But uh, Bob does, puts together radio shows. And, you know, people here listening to Bot Radio, they're listening. What are they listening to? They're listening to R.C. Sproul, 30-minute segment. They're listening to Alistair Begg, 30-minute segment. Uh, John MacArthur, all these different teachers they have. Uh, and even things like Focus on the Family and, and Wall Builders and, and different, different kinds of, of shows that we have here on Bot Radio. And so there's a lot of things that go into making those shows that, you know, we just sit and turn the radio on and there it is. So I thought today, kind of being the kind of show that this is, we'd kind of look under the hood, kind of what is involved in putting a radio show together. And so what better person to do that than my friend, the voice of the Rick Altizer show, Bob Allen. Well, at least I'm local and accessible for you. (laughs) I don't know about the best, but... (laughs) And you mentioned R.C. Sproul, you know, in, in the little catacall they did for his new announcer. Um, I, I was in that catacall and got beat, beat out by Lee Webb. I think he wears suits better than I do. And, and Alistair Begg, and they chose Bob Lapine. And anytime you lose out to Bob Lapine, it's like, okay, yeah, he's pretty good. And he's also a Baptist, so that fits with Alistair better. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about, um, you know, when I've got a 30-minute radio show, okay, I'm listening, and it's, it starts at noon, and it's done at 12.30. Did it just happen that way? How Absolutely. Do you, yeah. <laughs> how do you put a 30-minute radio show together? Can we talk about just some of the things that, that, okay, what's like the first step? and What's the first thing that happens and when we're putting a radio show together? Well, the first step is you need something that you didn't get today, and that is you need great content. <laughs> yeah, you chose me, so you got that one. Um, no, the first thing is, obviously, um, do I have content or a message that I feel, and, and in this context of Christian radio, that needs to be spread further? Um, 
And so do I have a teacher who's got a gift that can communicate the gospel in a way that is unique and that will reach a lot of people? So if you've got that, then obviously the first thing is to record them. Some people do it as an in-studio session. Some people do it as just the pulpit message itself. Uh, Some it's a combination of the two. Again, it's just like the church. It's reflective of the individuals that God has called into his kingdom, which are beautifully diverse and have all kinds of different gifts. Some of them are really funny. funny. Some of them are are more, you know, upright and standing like D. James Kennedy. Hello there. Um, (laughs) You know, some of them love to have a a laugh with everything like John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, it just reflects who God has called that person to be. So it's like the Bible. God chose different authors who had different ways of communicating, uh, some of them more scientific like Luke, some of them more poetic like John. And so that's the beautiful part of God's family. He's chosen all these different people to reflect different aspects of the gem that is our glorious king. So you start with uh, with great content. Good content. And so, so how do you get that content? Recorded well, hopefully. Um, these days it's digital. You know, back when I started in the when dinosaurs roamed the earth, it was uh, reel-to-reel tapes that were huge, and and we actually had to physically edit the tape, believe it or not. You had a razor blade and a block and a little uh, pencil that you marked the tape physically and then made the cut, and then you went, oh, oh. I just missed that edit, and then you got to piece it back together and recut it in a different place. Oh, that was such a fun day. Um, so you now would take, it's digital. You, you would take D. James Kennedy, let's say, uh, who wouldn't speak in a 25-minute, you know, he would speak for 40 <laughs> no. minutes. Yeah, it right? was more like 38 to 45. 40 minutes, yeah. and you've got to cut it down to, how long would you cut that down to? It wouldn't be 30 because oh, you would have the man. intro, you would have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're taking me back into the Alzheimer's zone. Um, I think I remember, I think we were in the 21 to 22 minute uh, area. With so you've got messages. to take 40 minutes of message yeah. and make it 22. Yeah, make it so, self-contained and contextualized so you can do part one, part two. Yeah, that was pretty common. Okay, so then you would take a 40 minute message, let's say like Alistair's doing a 40 minute message or Chip Ingram or somebody... And then someone is taking that message and making decisions what to leave in, what to take out. How is it? So, so what's the process of that? Uh, it's different with different ministries. I mean, um, I'm working with one that I'm not supposed to talk about right now because I'm on a non-disclosure. But, um, you know, he's a little more persnickety. And, and basically someone within the ministry actually does the cut. It's not always well. Um, <laughs> and then hands us the, the message from which to do it. But... Uh, some of them, too, they uh, send it from the fact that it's done, and now a transcript is made of exactly what he said. And that way you're able to follow the transcript while you're – this is the way I've done it anyway. I follow the transcript listening to it, and what I will do is I will place marks on that transcript. It used to be hand, and now it's digital color coding, things like that. But I'll, I'll follow the message as I'm listening, and I'll say, okay – I can do an edit there. I can do an edit here. I can do an edit. And I'm not even thinking about content the first time through because I'm just saying, is it possible to make an edit at this point to where if I need to take something out, I could too. Uh, Also, is there any content I need to take out from the standpoint of that was really for the local group of people He's who talking were there about in the room Joe and, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember I mean, when Joe and I went and had lunch, you know, isn't that funny, Joe? Something like lot, that. Yeah, something like that. I mean, obviously, there are some examples with Joe that would communicate to Mike or Peter or something somewhere else in the world. But mainly, it's like a local event that's going to happen mm-hmm. a week from mm-hmm. now might be met, mentioned in the midst of a mes- message. Well, you know, that's not going to carry over to something across the country. Or right. Hey, the world. next week, just to remind you, so-and-so is going to be here. You wouldn't want that in the... Right. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Basically, you go through, you review it, you figure out where can the edits be made, and then you go back and start to say, okay, from a continuity standpoint, what is going to communicate this message best in part one and part two? How do I do that break? You separate that out, and now you take your halves and say, okay, how long is that half? Am I going to need more writing for announcer copy? Or here's another element. A lot of the guys will do in-studio work. So, uh, for example, when I did John Piper, you know, I'd, I'd bring him into the studio. A lot of times I'd ask him a question to set up what we're talking about today, who it's going to speak to, what kind of things it's going to help them with. And then when it's done, and here's another thing that shortens messages, is obviously if you're doing more in-studio content, you need less 
of the spoken word from the pulpit. Right. So that's more stuff you got to time. It's got to exactly. all be time together. Yeah. Everything has to fit within that 26 minute or 28, 30, or it depends on what network mm-hmm. or station you're mm-hmm. dealing with as to how long their standard half hour is. And yeah, so all my of show, I have a half play. hour show. It's, I deliver 26 minutes. Yeah. Because they have uh, stuff before my show and after my show. Right. So I have a 30 minute show, but I have to deliver exactly 26 minutes. That's why sometimes at the end of my show, I'll have a little music run out for, you know, 10, 15 seconds, you know, because I didn't get it exactly. All the little <laughs> games we play. But yeah, I mean, some networks is 24 minutes, some it's 25. All of that comes into play is that I've got to get this all done by that time because guess what? If I go along, the network's going to cut me off and they're That's not right. going to hear that. And <laughs> also, are... they're going to cancel my show because, you know, you can't do that. Speaking of shows, you're listening to the Rick Altizer show. I have to do a little break in a couple, you know, every eight minutes or so I break in. And I've got actually you, I've got you recorded going, you're listening to a really nice guy, the Rick Altizer show. I've got Bob doing that as well. But I'm doing it today. You're listening to the Rick Altizer show, and I've got a really nice guy here with me, Bob Allen, the voice of the Rick Altizer show, is, and we're talking about what's kind of under the hood of how we make, uh, how these radio shows are made. Now, now, getting back to what we were talking about, I noticed like with R.C. Sproul, he'll do a thing called a, a quorum deo, which is at the end, he'll kind of sum up or tie up something with a, an extra thought that he'll do in studio. Right. That's kind of an addition to what he's talking about or so what so so then let's keep going here so we we're, we're compiling all these things and you have hard times that you have to hit and again it reflects the individual because some also do a break in the middle of the message mm-hmm. uh, it's so it depends on that ministry as to how they've decided is the best way to present their information and um you bring all of that together with then also you've got what are we talking about today as far as an offer? Is there a book? Is there just a copy of the message that's available? Is there a, a special event that's going on with the speaker that, that people can take part in? Um, there's all that kind of promotional material which has to come in and fit within that same window. So all of those things are in the producer's mind as he's going through it and as he's writing and how quick do I need to be here? Do I have more time? Can I talk about that? It's very different for every message and every ministry that I've worked for, and you just go with the flow. You, you reflect who they are. Um, one of the things, and I don't know whether I talked about this the first time. I probably did. But one of the illustrations that has always been powerful for me is as the co-host, I'm the picture frame. I'm there to keep everything within the boundaries that it keeps in, and I'm not to take focus upon myself. I'm to keep pointing to, you know, the colors in my frame should be highlighting the colors in the main content. That's what people are focused on, which hopefully in the end is Jesus and the message about him. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just there to make sure it all coheres and stays within the lines. But the focus needs to be on the main content. And so uh, everything is aimed toward that. That's okay. So 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 we've got a hard, let's say, let's just say for the sake, you've got a hard 20, 26 minutes. You know there's going to be a you know, minute and a half intro. You know, there's going to be. Do they give you a time? We're going to give. We'll do a cut in the middle, somewhere in the middle. No. We're going to be. All, well, all of it is just the producer is told this is what we're doing and make it happen. Okay, <laughs> I mean, so here, here's what you're going to be on the. We're going to insert this in the middle, and we're going to put this at the end. Now, so that gives you. Just, I'm just pulling out numbers out of the air. That gives you 12 minutes at the beginning, and then another 13 minutes and 14 seconds. At, at you know after the 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 middle break, so I've got twelve minutes here of content that I have to hit. You have to hit that twelve minutes exactly. Is that correct? Um, everything has to hit whatever the grand total is. And again, those numbers are pretty big for a twenty-six minute. You're probably talking more like you know ten or eleven on each side of it because you've got the beginning content and music, the ending content and music, the middle content and bumper music or announcer pieces. Mm-hmm. So. Bottom line is it just all has to add up to the right total. And most of the time, the producer has control over shortening this a little bit as far as the copy, the writing for each of those spaces. So at the end of the day, let's just say for, for uh, just you've got 20 minutes and 14 seconds that you have to provide content for. They've provided the intro, the music, the outro, the Coram Deo, and the middle offer break where they're offering, you know, 
hey, if you uh, contact us, we'll give you this this DVD set, and you know, if, if you, uh, we'd love to make this available to you for for any donation of any price. So those kinds of things. So let's say you got uh, what I say, twenty minutes and twelve seconds, and now I've got a forty minute message, and you've got to cut it to be exactly. 20 minutes and 12 seconds. So where, how do you make, are there times where you have, where you're having to make a call on the fly? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I mean, and it depends on who you're doing. I mean, when I edit Ravi Zacharias, oh my goodness. You know, what do you John cut? Piper. What do you, what do you do? What are you going to cut? Well, especially with a Ravi, because he's building his argument so precisely and every piece has to be there to get to the end. So some people are more difficult than others. Some are much more story-based, and you can kind of just, you know, there's value in what they're saying, and it's easier to slice up. But, it, again, it's, it's just the speaker. I mean, John Maxwell's different than John Piper's, different than uh, Kirby Anderson's, different than, you know. Every one of them has their own flavor, their own difficulty, their own style. And, and that's part of what makes the job fun is because it's not the same all the time. So 20 minutes and 14 seconds of, of content that you've got to come down to, how long does it take you to get 20 minutes and 14 seconds? What, what can it take? Wow, you're, you're really asking me on one here. Um, <laughs> We're pulling I'd numbers out of the air. Back, you know, I mean, basically, back when I was doing daily half-hour programs all the time, I would be really happy if I got, you know, two programs done in a day. In an eight-hour day. The, it, it's kind of like a train, though. The, the engine started down the tracks a long time before the caboose ever showed up. And so it's not a done in, you know, from A to Z all in one day. There's a lot of planning that goes on before you even start anything. And then the message and the transcript and what are the offers going to be is all planned in meetings that happen over months. Um, you know, a lot of times those half hour programs are done over a month before they hit the air. So that whole process may have started three months before that in the planning stages. And there's just a lot of pieces that happen along the way. Usually you don't do soup to nuts all in, in one or two days. So, so you've got – how many people are involved in a, in a radio – a daily radio broadcast? How many people could be involved? That's different at every ministry. But just, you know, kind of what, 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 what are some of the ranges of what, you could, oh, what you've gosh. seen? I mean, I couldn't experience. even – you've got to go through accounting people, marketing people, um, those that are involved in the technical staff getting you the content – itself you've you've got the producer and, and then maybe some people an executive producer and and maybe you've got a separate editor uh, it's very different at every it ministry could be 10 15 20 people could be involved oh, in this but easily. by the time you're done with it and and on the production side of things when i got to coral ridge in the beginning for d james kennedy there were four people doing aspects of once i arrived very quickly i was the one doing all four of those what they were doing and that's just based on who's your team and what are their abilities and gifts. I just happened to be able to do all of those different things that they were farming out to different people. And so it, it, that's the beautiful thing. Again, it's every team is different. Every team has different gifts. And it's a matter of, you know, sometimes the job description says this, but you really have those gifts among two different people. Mm -hmm. And you can divide up the work. So it's all Who's, so do it's you a have? Team, it's a massive team effort. Yeah. So I'm sitting listening to uh, you know an RC Sproul 30 minute radio show, and there is a team of people involved in putting that show together, editing it, making it, recording it, uh, making the decisions of. Okay, it was a 40 minute message. Where do I cut from day one to day two? Where do I stop? How do I you know? Uh, I could see that taking tons of work. It, Why do I cut it out? It takes time. And I've heard uh, some of Alistair Begg's messages, which go into the hour category. I've heard some of the yeah. things that he's done in some of his – and, and I, I actually hear the actual message. Oh, I heard that on the radio. Oh, I like that. I go online and download it. It's over an hour, the actual – okay, how do I cut an hour down to 20 minutes? That 
to me, blows my mind. And that's where you give thanks for a Bob Butts, who runs um, Alistair Begg's ministry and the team he's put together. And you also pray for the fact that he's talking about doing television, and it would be wonderful to have him in the Christian television realm. So um, there's just all kinds of great people in the Christian media industry, many of whom you never hear nor see. Hmm. And, you know, give thanks for all that. It's kind of like uh, this is a little different illustration, but it's one from my life that my wife will love. It's my great grains moment. When you stare at that bowl of cereal in the morning and you just you can just eat it thoughtlessly and go through. But if you stop for a moment, you think, look at all the different plants that went into this bowl of cereal. And then think about all of the things the farmer had to do to get those different things to grow. And the weather had to be right. And there had to be no flood. And and then you go into the fact of all the different machinery that was involved. And that's just at the farm level. And then you get into the processing and you get into the marketing of it and you get into the packaging. You got to print the and box. You think, yeah. All of the things that had to go together to put that morning cereal together, you can give thanks to God that that works. Mm-hmm. And there are many places in the world where it doesn't work. The teams, you know, the market is not such that people are able to use their gifts and benefits, so they don't. And people starve. You know, so every morning when you eat that bowl of cereal or whatever you have, you should be giving thanks to your great and gracious God that he brought it together. Same thing with the Christian radio program. There's tons of things behind it that brought that product to you. And you can stop and give thanks every day. Thank you, Lord, for every person that was involved in that effort to bring me your word powerfully through Alistair Begg or R.C. Sproul. Fantastic. You are listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, and my guest today is the voice of The Rick Altizer Show, Bob Allen. We're talking about what goes behind uh, the scenes in making uh, radio shows, uh, the shows you listen to every day on this network. What is involved in that? And, you know, you, you mentioned something about giving thanks to God, and, you know, I just want to take—I wasn't planning on this, but I think this is a very appropriate thing to do. Uh, you, you know, the radio shows you listen to that minister to you, that bless you, a particular uh, person, an Alistair Begg, an R.C. Sproul, John MacArthur, and they just really, uh, Robbie Zacharias, they speak to you, Chip Ingram. These shows have 20, 30, 40 people involved, uh, massive amounts of people, uh, materials. There's a lot of cost. Uh, that's a lot of employees. There's a, you know, they don't just pop up on Bot Radio and there they are. So, uh, and I know Bot Radio wants me to say this, support the the ministries. If they if you're seeing somebody or here listening to somebody, sorry, if you're listening to somebody on a regular basis and they're blessing you and they're feeding you, you know what? Support that ministry because there's so much work that goes into that little 30-minute thing you listen to every day. I mean, there's a lot of effort, a lot of work, and there's a lot of cost that costs that ministry dollars to put it together. So uh, I know Bot Radio would want me to say this, go and support those people. Yeah, amen. And I think one other side of that as well is that it's not lost on many of us within the quote-unquote industry, uh, the sacrifices that people make. I remember sitting once and listening to one of our people that visited donors, and he visited this this older lady in her apartment, and it was basically bare. And he was like, he finally got up the, the gumption, and he said, I just noticed, you know, are you in the midst of moving or remodeling? Or, And she said, well, after my husband died, I really didn't need all this furniture, so I, I've been selling off pieces of furniture so I can give more to the ministry. <laughs> And that was one of those jaw-dropping moments Mm -hmm. where you immediately didn't want to waste a single dollar of that money because you realized what someone sacrificed to be able to give. Yes. And so that's amazing that the ministries are very aware of the fact that people Not are giving... always, but hopefully. I mean, those, that's one of those memories that I will mm-hmm. never forget as I work and labor in, in the kingdom. That, you know, that's what's so beautiful about Bot Radio is that all of our teaching, all of the shows are very Christ-focused. They're leading, they're giving, you know, they, they really have worth and value. My wife lost her mom, and it was just the, the, the grief was so hard for her. She had Bot Radio on pretty much all day. She just, that's what she listened to, and that's what got her through. She, she couldn't go to sleep. She would just have it on while she was sleeping, just hearing God's Word, hearing the encouragement. And it was so amazing. She would always hear something, yeah, Alistair or somebody would talk about heaven. Would talk, that was something that was really, that would touch her heart. So um, 
You know, what an amazing thing Christian radio is. It's, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's something we need to be supportive of and praying for. Pray for your ministries. Pray for these people who, and, and don't just pray for the people who you're hearing on the radio, but pray for all the people involved in making that and putting that together. And send a thank you note to Bot Radio for being so conscientious about who they put on the air and how well they teach the Bible. Yes, they have. Uh, they, they're very strict about what kind of doctrine is is on the air. They're not uh, prosperity gospel. You don't hear that. There's stuff that they're very. Uh, they want to make sure it's biblical, biblical focus. So, yeah, amen. so thank you, Bob, for doing this. This is so much fun. And, My pleasure, Rick. And I hope uh, you, the listening audience, I hope this was informative to you and helpful to you. And uh, you know, uh, again, as we listen to these radio shows, be mindful, be th- be prayerful of uh, what goes behind and what goes into these shows, uh, and uh, also pray about uh, how you can be supportive, how you can come along and support these ministries. If uh, uh, And, of course, prayer is a wonderful way to do that. And then if God leads it on your heart to financially support a ministry on this radio network, we wholeheartedly encourage you to do that. Bob, thanks for being on the show. It was great. You've been listening to The Rick Altizer Show. Yeah, thank you very much, All Rick. right, I love it. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.